Um, this is going to be a, a proactive uh, presentation, so I'll be asking you in a few minutes to go through some stretching routines, and um, also um, it would be silly of me if I didn't show you some um, basic exercises, so it means standing up and moving around and whatever, but I want you to go away with a routine, a stretching routine and a weight-bearing routine, but also um, meditation, because I deal with the mind-body-spirit uh, connection. Um, I teach balance and stability classes, as well as stretch and strengthen classes on Tuesday and Friday, 11 a.m. every week um, at the Bonsai Holistic Spa, which is in uh, Cypress Palms. I teach meditation classes on a Thursday, which includes visualization, autogenic training, progressive muscle relaxation, and breath work. Visualization is the most powerful form of changing the way you think and the way your body is. Visualization is a way to take you back to your pre-Parkinson's condition and see yourself as you used to be, to be able to move freely and experience happiness in your lives. So visualization is very, very important, simple technique to take you back, and it's so, and it doesn't cost anything. I was talking to someone the other day um, about uh, visualization, and um, she was Parkinson's patient, and I asked her to take herself back to somewhere in her life before Parkinson's where she felt fantastic, and she took herself to Spain where she experienced a holiday with her husband. And when she came out of this uh, um, hypnotic state, she could experience and tell everything that happened on that day. Her face was alight and bright. She moved relaxed and free and easy just because of that experience. And I said, how, how much did it uh, take to get there? How long did it take? Didn't cost anything. And it took a fraction of a second to get there. So with you people, or anyone with Parkinson's or cancers or whatever, you have to use the power of the mind and visualize the way that you would love your, to see yourself to be. The mind is the most powerful thing of all. You have to change it round. When you have Parkinson's, you think of Parkinson's. You have to change it round the other way and think positive, happy things because the body is supposed to be the servant of the mind. If it's not, then it, you've got it the wrong way around. You have to take back control of yourself through visualization techniques, most powerful thing of all. I learned uh, many, many years ago of the power of visualization and faith and belief. I was brought up in a spiritualist uh, church atmosphere, Christ-based. Um, as a young child, every Sunday I was taken to church and I witnessed hands on healing and miracles. Now as a young kid, of course, I was very, very fortunate to be able to experience this because it was a basis of my belief system throughout life. And I expected everything and anything could happen if your belief system was strong enough, if you truly believed. Now, of course, this is a, a spiritual aspect of the mind-body-spirit connection but faith and belief are so powerful. There was, um, in, the, in the Bible, I believe, uh, there was a dear lady who, um, her faith was that if I could just touch the hem of the robe of Christ, then I would be healed. She crawled through the crowd and stuck her hand out and touched the hem of Christ's garment, and she was instantly healed. And he said to her, it wasn't I that healed you, it was your faith. So if you believe enough, you can move mountains, you can do all great things, but you have to take back control. You have to be part of your healing process. Of course, exercise is very, very important. Part of it all is the mind-body-spirit connection. But the mind, of course, the spiritual belief, they are all one. They're not separate. Um, the physical aspect of my upbringing, um, I was um, introduced to karate um, at a very early age and I became uh, the national coach and teacher 
um, for the Japanese organization in the UK and also on a governing body for Europe uh, overseeing 26 countries. And I found through my studies, strange studies you might think of breaking bricks, uh, wood, concrete and so on with various parts of the body you might think what, what the hell is he talking about but, but in karate you tend to do these things to see what your body is capable of achieving and I managed to do the most astounding things by breaking these lumps of concrete and pieces of wood without injuring myself and once again I realized that the mind is in control of my body not the other way around. I realized that the mind was so powerful that I could do anything in my life. And that was that understanding that brings me here today and into the USA to teach at um, the Bonsai Holistic Spa. Bless you. Um, regular exercise plays an important role in the fight against stress. It provides recreation and mental relaxation besides keeping the body physically and mentally fit. It is nature's best tranquilizer. Now we understand stress of course and if you have stress and you're constantly considering and thinking about your condition your stress level rises, your anxiety level rises and your condition gets worse. There's a gentleman called Jim, he won't mind me talking about him today, um, in the Cypress Palms, he has advanced Parkinson's, a young man, and when he came to us, he was wheelchair bound, and his anger was so, so powerful that it left him rigid in his chair. And so it was my work to try and change his mind, uh, mindset round so that he could actually start to move take him through exercises that would help him to relieve the stress level and when this happened the man could get up out of his chair and walk just by getting rid of the anxiety and stress that was taking place in his mind then his body was um, sadly it doubled his uh, Parkinson's. This man now that he was on um, a radio program being interviewed a couple of weeks ago and he can, from his chair, once he gets in, into the gym, to exercise, he changes. There is something happening in his mind from Parkinson's outside the gym to no Parkinson's once he steps into the gym. Something is happening up here that is allowing him to struggle to get out of the chair and then walk into the gym and start to exercise. This man plays with a ball in there. He runs and kicks the ball. He jumps over the ball. He does incredible things once he's in the gym environment. But once he steps outside again, he's back in the wheelchair. So what is it that's taking place in his mind that's allowing him to move from Parkinson's to virtually no Parkinson's stepping over the threshold from outside the gym to inside the gym. Is it the fact that he enjoys to do so much actively in the gym that it overcomes his state of Parkinson's? You see Muhammad Ali, when, he's, when he, he goes into the gym his ability to walk is, is, is not very good nowadays, but going into the gym, once he puts on boxing gloves, this man starts to punch the bag and starts to dance around the bag, hitting the bag with balance. It's an un unbelievable thing to see. What is happening from getting into the ring or into the training area and then to start to train? The exercise, there's something happening in the brain from Parkinson's to no Parkinson's that's allowing him to do this. This is an investigation that should be looked into um, um, very, very seriously. You look at Michael J. Fox, I believe, he's, he ice skates. And once he's on the ice, enjoying himself, his tremors stop. I have people who, um, I, as I say, I, I teach uh, meditation techniques um, Autogenic training, basically autogenic training is like a self-creation technique with affirmations that you say on a, a daily basis um, where you're commanding your body to be in a certain state, a certain condition. 
And I found that the people with Parkinson's who come in with tremors, during the half an hour they're with me, their tremors stop. They start to relax. Because the mind is shifting from the condition they're in to a happy state. There are many reasons why exercise is good for you. Increased energy, increased self-esteem, increased mental focus, decreased risk of a heart attack, decreased decrease risk of osteoporosis, reduce the risk of breast cancer by up to 60%, increased strength and stamina, reduced depression, decreased stress levels, the worries and stresses of everyday living, commuting work demands, Parkinson's, etc., can stick with you long after the work is done. Exercise right after work is the perfect natural therapy that can change your mood. You'll sleep better too. But it all breaks down to one thing. If you don't use it, you lose it. Isn't that so true? If you don't use it, you lose it. So obviously you have to stress muscle to build muscle. You have to stress bone to make bone stronger. And this is through exercise. So it's very, very important to understand that if you want to be bound in a chair every day, then just stay in the chair every day. Your body will forget what it's supposed to do for you. It will, it, it will forget that it's supposed to be moving. You have to move it, otherwise you will lose it. I want to take you through um, a simple meditation technique first before I introduce you to a head-to-toe stretching technique that you can use every day to help to relax muscle. Stretched muscle is relaxed muscle. When you're concentrating on movement, you're not concentrating on the stress that's taking place in your mind. It's a distraction technique, a very, very powerful distraction technique that I would like you to take away with you today. But I want to introduce you to a moving meditation technique that I, I give everyone. I had um, a lawyer in at the end of last year um, he came in, he had, his blood pressure was extremely high, his, his face was bright red, his pulse rate was 100 as he was sitting there talking to me. And I, I introduced this simple technique to him and his uh, heart rate dropped 20 points as he was sitting there. Concentrating on your breath, concentrating on the movement associated with breath, you're distracted from the things that are happening in your head. It's an interesting thing that Merlin said to a young King Arthur once, how can you ever be alone with so many voices in your head? And it's true, you know? All those voices telling us to do this, we've got to do that, or you can't get away from this, and so on. Trying to find the true voice, you have to do some form of meditation to center yourself. Take yourself away from that period of time from Parkinson's to a relaxed state. It's a simple thing to do it, but to do it every day. If you want to feel the benefits of meditation and breath work on a daily basis, these are all exercises, not necessarily just gym orientated. These are mind exercises and breath exercises. If you do this technique for two minutes before you eat, every day at the same time, then when, say for instance breakfast, lunch and dinner, just an example, then you'll find that the body will become attuned and will be wanting to feel this way after about three weeks of doing this technique. You will automatically, before you go to breakfast, lunch and dinner, your body will start to relax. So whatever you do the most of, you become. Whatever you think of most, you become. I personally <clears throat> think happy thoughts every day. I have the same affirmations every day. You have to override any negativity that takes place in your head. Everyone has them. It's hard work to change your mind round. How can you, if you're constantly thinking of Parkinson's, you become addicted to the thinking of Parkinson's. If you want to change it round, you've got to break the addiction. Two. So I'd like to, to introduce you to this simple technique. Turn this, thing off. this simple technique. Hold your hands about shoulder width apart, like so. 
Right? Do you imagine you've got a giant bellows in between your hands? You grip the bellows and breathe in through the nose as you open, breathe out through the mouth as you close. You close your eyes now, breathe in, slowly, and breathe out. As you do so, you're imagining the stress is leaving your body as you're concentrating on the breath and the movement of the hands at the same time. In through the nose, out through the mouth. In through the nose, out through the mouth. Keep going. The shoulders are starting to relax. Your muscles are starting to relax. In through the nose, out through the mouth. Get a rhythm, this cycle, this rhythm. This rhythm, you can think of peace as you breathe in. Think of happiness as you breathe out. In and out. In. Like the tide coming in, tide going out. The body's starting to relax even more. Just sitting here of peace, relaxation, joy, happiness, wonder. Imagine as you're doing this now, visualize yourself in a special place. Visualize yourself in a place that you'd love to be right now, where you feel happy and relaxed. Visualize that. Try and make it a reality. Concentrate on that place of happiness that you're in. Feel yourself feeling the joy of being there. You do this every day. Your body will relax to such an extent think a miracle has taken place. In and breathe out. Another 30 seconds, concentrate. Breathe in. Breathe out. 15 seconds. and stop. Do any of you feel a little bit more relaxed than you were before you did this? Did anyone? Yay, good job. How easy it is to take back control just for a short period of time. And you can do that on a daily basis. You know? Relax the body, concentrate on the breath. In all cultures, the interesting thing is that breath and spirit mean the same thing. Spiritus, Ruach, Prana, all of them mean breath and spirit. So, could it be that if you have control of your breath, then your spirit becomes stronger? The spirit will overcome all things if you concentrate on rhythmic breathing. When everything, everything in life is rhythm, everything, nothing that is in chaos. Everything has got some sort of rhythm to it. We're rhythmic beings. When we're sick, when we're ill, we've lost control of the rhythm of life. You have to take it back. And that's one way to do it. You know, an exercise of breath work like that. Doing it every day. Every day. You have to become addicted to it. You know? When you're stressed out, when you're anxious, of course, the things in your hair going haywire, then your breath goes exactly the same way. And then you're under oxygenated. And that causes even more problems to the body because the body starts to contract. Thinks it's, thinks it's under attack because it hasn't got enough oxygen in it. Exactly the same thing with water. If you haven't got enough water, the body's armor comes on and the body becomes stressed. So breathing, breath work, oxygenation, water, if you're lacking in those things, then your body is stressed. 
And if you've got Parkinson's, once again, you're adding to the stress of Parkinson's and doubling the effect of Parkinson's. Very, very important to understand that the body listens to what's going on in your mind. Constantly. If it hears fear, it reacts to fear. If it's sadness or depression, the body will become sad and depressed. If the body's happy, then the body will become happy. That's how simply it all is. Change your thinking, become addicted to it, and you'll help your Parkinson's in a positive way. I want to introduce you now to a head-to-toe stretching technique. I'd like you to do it with me because it's very, very important that you concentrate on stretching those muscles, relaxing those muscles, and helping to overcome physical stress in the body. So first of all, I'd like you to look to the left or right and hold that position for five. One, two, three, four, five. Turn to the right. Hold that position for five. One, two, three, four, five. Look to the front. Put your head back, stretching the muscles around the vocal cord. Hold for the count of five. One, two, three, four, five. Put your chin on your chest, hold the position for the count of five. One, two, three, four, five. And straighten the count. Roll the shoulders up and back. Stretching the muscles in the shoulder girdle. Stretching the muscles across the chest. This helps you to breathe more easily if the muscles of the chest are stretched. Shoulders fall back. Four and five. Now put your arms behind you and pull and hold that stretch for five. One, two, three, four, five. Put your fingers together in front. If you can, try the best you can. Push your arms out as straight as you can without feeling any pain and hold that position for five. One, two, three, four, five. Raise the palms up to the ceiling. If you can, as I say, if it causes you pain, just don't do it, or just go as far as you can without discomfort and hold that position. One, two, three, four, five. Down we come, slowly does it. Right hand to left shoulder. Give the elbow a little bit of a push. One, two, three, four, five. Left hand to right shoulder. Give the elbow a little bit of a push. One, two, three, try your best. Five. Right hand up in the air as far as you can without discomfort. If you can, drop the hand behind the head. Try your best. If you can, just push the elbow back a little bit for one, two, three, four, five. Down we come. Other hand straight up in the air. Drop the hand behind the head. If you can, without feeling pain, push back gently for one. Two, three, four, five. Right. Don't forget, any movement is better than no movement. All right? Rotate the wrist. One, two, three, four, five. And the other way. One, two, three, four, five. Let the left hand droop down. Push gently on the back of the hand like so. One, two, three, four, Five. Point the fingers straight up in the air. Push back gently. One, two, three, four, five. Let the other hand droop down. Push gently on the back of the hand. One, two, three, four, five. Point the fingers straight up in the air. Push back gently. One, two, three, four, five. Grab one finger at a time. Give a gentle tug. One, two, three, four, five. And the other hand, one, two, three, four, and five. And shake. I want you to turn in your chair and turn to the right or left and just hold that position for five, one, two, look in the direction you're going, four, five, come back around the other side, hold that position for five, one, Two, three, four, five, back to the middle. Now I want you to reach down the side of the chair. 
If you drop something on the floor, you want to be able to pick it up. So this is an exercise to stretch and strengthen those muscles which will allow you to do that. Just try as far, go as far as you can, feel with balance without any discomfort, and hold for five. One, two, three, four, five. Up the other way, down the other side. Always do it slowly, no hurry. One, two, three, four, and five. I want you to rotate your left foot for five, one, two, three, four, five. Take it through the range of motion it's supposed to go through, around the other way, two, three, four, five. Forward and back, plant and dorsiflexion, forward and back. There you go, good job. I can see the, I can see the front pose working. <laughs> And the other side, all the, all the front of the table is shaking. And the other foot, round and round we go. Five, one, two, three, four, five. And the other way, one, two, three, four, five. Forward and back for five, and one, two, three, four, five. Side side, one, two, three, four, and five. And the best stretch of all, sadly none of you can do it because you would probably knock yourselves out on the table, would be to hang down in between your legs. So I'd rather you didn't do that one, but it's very, very powerful to stretch the lower back and the spine. Just hanging down in between the legs, chin on the chest, just for the count of ten. And another powerful technique. Okay, another technique to open the chest up, I call it the circle of life, but to be careful is like so. Breathe in. And out. Breathe in. If you have someone you don't like very much by the side of you, <laughs> then give them a quick, as you go down, four, one more, and five. Okay. I'd like you, if you wouldn't mind, in the next two or three minutes or so, is to stand up. I want to leave you with some balance and stability exercises. So, you can do this because you have the support of the table in front of you. So try to get up safely. Okay, what I want you to do, hold on to the table, we're going to work the walking muscles of the legs, all right? Or you can put your hands up like so. I want you to come up, up and down on the balls of the feet. We're working the calf muscles. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Try your best. One is better than none. And stop. Now I want you to pull the toes back of each foot. You're working the muscles down the front of the shin. These are the muscles. These are the muscles that pull your toes back in normal gait. If these are weak, you're more likely to stub your toes and fall over. So this exercise is very, very powerful. Stress the muscles to build muscle, strength some muscle. Pulling the toes back, taking the ball of the foot off the floor. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, and eighteen, and nineteen, and twenty. Now we're going to work the quads, the big muscles on the top of the thigh, by squatting. You don't have to go down too far. Two. Three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, nine, ten. Who would have thought today that you'd be bobbing up and down like this? <laughs> Sixteen. But you've got to move it, otherwise you lose it. That's, that's the simple phrase. Always think about that every day. If something's not working for you, pay attention 
to that part that's, that's not working as it should do and tell it what you want it to do. And stop. Now I want you to put the right foot forward so the left foot's behind. Now I want you to sway forward and back. Now I want you to sway, I don't want you to sway like this. I want you to sway looking up, hips forward and back. Slowly go, feeling the balance required to do this technique. You can breathe in as you go back, you can breathe out as you come forward, and you've got to perform a Tai Chi. Tai Chi is a very powerful exercise routine for people with Parkinson's found to be very beneficial. Change the other foot because they're flying off the stage. Forward and back. Shifting your weight from the front to the back. Try and keep your hips forward. Look straight up. That's called the gravity line when your body is straight up in the air and straight. It's very important to understand that if you look down Eventually you'll fall down. If you look up, you'll stay up. And stop, turn around, shoulder width apart. Feet again, just bend your knees slightly. We went forward and back, now we're going to side to side, slowly shifting your weight from side to side. No balanced muscles coming into play. It's interesting when you see people who are depressed, how they look down and their bodies are bowed forward. And then all of a sudden, when something fantastic happens in your day, all of a sudden you're looking up and your body straightens. So that's a clue. Shifting side. You're concentrating in your, on your balance, which is the most powerful thing. Listening to the muscles in your feet, the legs, top of the femur, all trying to keep you in the upright position. And stop. Okay, now we're going to do this. Who remembers the hula hoop? I wasn't, you can see I wasn't very good at it. I, I was actually this slow, that's why I never stayed up. And slowly do this, concentrating the feel, pushing the hips forward, coming back. It's almost like a Qi Gong exercise. Round the other way. And stop. And the most important one of all, Marching on the spot. Simple way at home you can hold on to something to keep the legs moving. We do this at uh, the, uh, the Bonsai Wellness Center. We do loads of sitting exercises too today, but there is no time to do all these things that I could show you. But you are welcome to come and take part. The classes are free on a Tuesday and Thursday and we've got a Palms of Largo, Largo table out there with the information on the autogenic relaxation technique, progressive muscle relaxation techniques that you can learn on a Thursday. All you have to do is turn up. Keep on moving. Don't forget, if you don't use it, you... I think any minute now a big hook is going to come around my neck. <laughs> I'm going to drag screaming from the platform. That's all right. That's happened before. <laughs> Get a little bit quicker if you can. Get the old blood circulating. If you're in your apartment to do it safely, always hold on to something. Very, very important. Keep on moving. I can 
sing a song, but I don't know any songs that can go with this. Oh, anyone know the saints go marching in? Yeah. Are you really? Go and sing it then. <laughs> oh, I know one. Go marching in. Marching in. Da, 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 da. When the saints go marching in. Oh, they go now. When the saints, when the saints go marching in. When the saints go marching in. Nothing about that number. Oh, and the saints go marching in. Yeah. Legacy, my friends. Legacy. Right on. Have a good. I think my time has come, my friends. It's time to say farewell. I didn't really tell you much about myself. I was too busy talking about other things. Myself. I, my job is to teach others to be better than they are, to introduce people to the power of the mind, the power of spirituality, and the power the body has within it if the mind lets it do its job. So I would just like to say I hope to see you sometime again in the future. Please try and make the effort to come and see our classes at uh, the Bonza Holistic Spa. And um, I look forward to seeing you. Have a fantastic, blessed day. Goodbye. Yes. You said it's the, the classes are free. Classes are free. How who underwrites the cost of the facilities and everything? Uh, well, the Cypress Palms assisted living facility. Oh. Yeah. So, uh, but we have other other classes there too. But it's open, open to the public, free. Open to the public, free. We want people to uh, receive the information that I've given you today, and we want them to be well. You know. So we have a Parkinson's program specifically at the Cypress uh, Palms. Um, it's free to you. All you have to do is come, turn up, take part. And the knowledge you get, just take it away and practice. Thank you very much. My pleasure.